All right, we're going to talk about Gear Club Unlimited 2, the exclusive new racing game for Nintendo Switch that came out just before we started our Rocket and Raygun week, so I didn't have time to get out there and review it. Uh, but before we get into the review, I know you're wondering about my new uh, cool jacket that I'm wearing right here. This is from uh, Columbia Sports, where this is a remake of the actual crew parka that they wore during the filming of The Empire Strikes Back. We mentioned it in our rundown recently, and Columbia Sportswear knew that uh, I shoot reviews on the run, and they said, do you want to have something on you that will keep you warm and make you feel like you are shooting The Empire Strikes Back? And I said, yes, yeah, that would be cool. And so they sent it to me. It's a little overkill for December in uh, Vancouver, but still, this is keeping me nice and toasty, and I like this connection to the best Star Wars movie, which is very cool. All right, now back to Gear Club Unlimited 2. Uh, this is a racing game uh, sequel to a game that didn't really impress me all that much when I reviewed the first Gear Club game. I have to say that there have been some pretty noticeable improvements, particularly in the frame rate and the handling of the vehicles. This is a traditional kind of simulation-based racing game, but it's very accessible. It's very arcadey. You can bump and bash the cars. You've got a rewind function that will take you back 30 seconds if you spin out or just feel like you're not hitting that uh, you know persistent racing line that's there for you. You've got over 50 cars to unlock, all based on licensed models. You know BMWs in there, Lotuses in there, Porsches in there, Nissan, all kinds of cars that you're going to dig. You start off with a Mini Cooper, uh, and you kind of learn the ropes of this game. And the reason why it's called Gear Club is because all of the cars are kind of locked behind these gates of uh, different ratings basically you got the a rating cars and the b rating cars and the c and d and you get the idea you have to earn the money from the races that you've got during single player mode to unlock these cars and purchase them and you purchase them from specific letter graded dealerships which uh, once you get them and have appropriately tuned them you are then eligible to enter the uh, appropriate uh, races so you've got a level races and b level races and, C and so on and so on and the cars are kind of uh, segregated based on horsepower and overall power which brings us to the gear portion of the title for this game and this series now it's a franchise now it's all about tuning your vehicles, and you've got performance tuning that you can do with tires and engines and transmissions and aerodynamics, and you're, you can kind of model and, and affect your vehicle in a bunch of different ways. There's cosmetic features, graphics, and things that you can throw on there, decals and all kinds of stuff. But really, what you want to spend your money on is tuning so that your car goes faster, and then that will not only help you win the races, but also allow you entry into locked events, which require your vehicle to be at a certain power, which is all kind of a addictive, um, but there are definitely some recurring problems with this game or returning problems with this game. First of all, the frame rate isn't as high as you want it to be. It's better. It doesn't lag as much, but I did notice a couple of stutters when I was playing it just in single player mode. Um, it also has a tremendously long load time in between every sequence. Whether you're going into the shops, you're going to be waiting for that to kind of load up for you, and certainly in between races or when you're finding a, a position on the map to go to and then you go, I want to go into that race, you have a long loading time there. And there's even these tremendously long loading times as you're going from station to station within your, uh, your tuning shop, which is kind of crazy. And I do like what they've done there. They've physicalized it. It's not like just a menu that you go to. You actually see your car on each of these different stations and you can pick up your car and put it onto a different station. You can pick up each of the station, whether it's the, the wind tunnel or the, uh, you know, the uh, engine tuning station or the graphic station or whatever. You can position them where you want to in your shop. You can augment cosmetically the shop the way that you want to. You can spend money that way if you want so you get this cosmetic look. Uh, you've even got little mechanics and stuff walking around, some weird looking character models there by the way I, I checked the calendar and it is 2018 so the, the and almost 2019 so the people that they have in this game I don't think they should have put any people in the game they look a little crude and weird uh, but even between those stations the loading time is way too long so it just takes you're waiting a lot in this game you know and I think one of the key components of a racing game as we're entering in what 40 years of video game racing should be speed to experience you know not only should you feel the speed when you're on the track but you should it should feel speedy to just navigate through the you know the infrastructure of the game it should feel quick like you're zipping from you know the tuning station to the track it should feel quick everywhere you should feel like Ugh. and I, you know that goes for Forza and everything out there this was something that really hit me as I was sort of sitting there 
chilling and waiting. And certainly we've got games like uh, Fast RMX Racing and especially Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And now there's the Horizon Chase Turbo game, which came out this year for a Switch, which is pretty solid. They're all about speed. Certainly they don't have as many uh, texture details and as much kind of, uh, you know, adherence to reality and adherence to kind of simulation type properties as this game does. But still, it does take a long time for data to load into the game and for you to enjoy that data. I did get addicted to the racing. I did get, you know, like staying on the line. I did like doing the time challenges. My favorite mode in the game is when they eliminate racers and they, you've got, you know, 20 seconds and you got to stay ahead of the pack and then the last well, last person in the pack gets uh, eliminated. I've always loved that mode and it's pretty solid in this game. There is that sense of like, oh, come on, come on, come on. But, you know, once you start to level up and get all of your stuff together, it does feel like you can kind of blow past a lot of the competition in single player. And unfortunately, the game doesn't have a multiplayer, on, at least of at the time of me reviewing this it doesn't have a multiplayer uh, you know online component which is kind of inexcusable to release a racing game without that you want that online mode and you know at the end of the day this is an all right racing experience and I think that you can see you know there there's some pedigree to Eden games they've worked on uh, test drive games in the past and they're really positioning this as the Forza for switch but if you compare a game like this to Forza Horizon 4 or the Forza Motorsport games this is not anywhere near that level of competition. It feels dated, it feels janky. It's a good kind of game to point to to say, well, you know what, maybe it is a, a good time for Nintendo to think about releasing a Nintendo Switch Pro. Maybe racing games like this and games that need a lot more kind of, you know, closer to photoreal fidelity need a little more horsepower than Nintendo Switch currently is capable of. And I can see the argument for that. Uh, but yeah, this doesn't stand as the best racing experiences out there, and I think there are more fun racing games that you can get for Nintendo Switch, but of course they're not sims like this. Uh, I, I still, I, I, I like that they are taking another kick at it, and I like that they've come out so quickly with a sequel that does improve on performance. Um, and I, it's hard to refute that the racing, once you get past the load times and, and some of the concessions that you make for the, the, uh, the fidelity of the game and the, and the production qualities of the game, it's still pretty solid, pretty fun. But I say, you know, even if this is an attractive game for you, if this does look like a cool experience, I say wait a little while because it's probably going to go on sale in the new year. And unless you're like a super diehard, I want a Nintendo racing game that kind of feels a little more realistic and you got to get it this holiday season, I say wait because it's probably going to go down in price. It's not fantastic, and we've been playing racing games for so long, and there are so many great ones that we can point to that this one just isn't in that pack. I'm going to give Gear Club Unlimited 2 a 6 out of 10.